I just bought the Ultimate Tow Rig, and in this video, we're going to go over the specifics of everything you need to be looking for when you're purchasing your next vehicle. So this vehicle is a 2019 Ford F-250 Lariat, and we're going to be giving it away. If this other video gets 5,000 likes, make sure you click the link to the video. If it does not get 5,000 likes, I'm not letting Mitchell give this thing away. So make sure you go over there, check out the details, make sure and like it, because we want to make sure that somebody gets to win an awesome tow rig. But in this video, as I mentioned to you, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to not get screwed when you're picking up your next pre-owned vehicle. The first thing we need to talk about are the things that could have happened in the past on the vehicle. So check things like Carfax and the auto check. Trust me, it is important for you to pay for those by yourself. Don't rely on something that the dealership has handed you. I've seen a lot of situations where an older Carfax is handed to a consumer, not at our dealership, but from other dealerships, they'll hand an older Carfax before an accident may show up. So if you're considering purchasing a vehicle, you might want to purchase a fresh Carfax on your own to ensure that there's nothing hidden in there from the dealer's perspective. The other thing you might want to consider is the actual condition of the paintwork and the bodywork itself. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can check for specific things on the bodywork to see if there's been paintwork done. Now, a little bit about me. If you don't know, I've actually been in the car business for well over 23 years and I've done everything from uh, being a new car sales manager to a pre-owned sales manager as well as an appraiser of pre-owned vehicles. So I know what I'm talking about. First thing, let's show you how you can check for previous body damage regardless of whether or not anything is showing on the Carfax. The easiest way to inspect for previous body work is to be inspecting it by yourself. First thing I like to do is run my finger down every one of the door jams right here on the hood, on the everywhere. Every single time that there is an open door that you can feel, you want to feel for any kind of a tape line. If you feel a tape line, that is a sign that they've had that thing repainted uh, you know, at some point. Now the downside to these particular trucks, this is an aluminum bodied vehicle. So it's got an ultra high strength steel frame and the body itself is made out of military grade aluminum alloy. And the problem with that is you can't have one of those paint meters where it's got a magnet, you stick it and you pull it apart. It doesn't work because this is not going magnets don't stick to aluminum so you are not able to do that on a super duty whereas you might be able to do it on something like the bronco that is on the other side of this camera <laughs> and so what you want to do is walk around and check every seam for a tape line all the way around if you feel any kind of a rough thing that is a sign you might need to slow down and figure out what's going on a couple of other ways that you can do that is actually looking at the bolts inside of the vehicle so over here you've got the door that is bolted to the actual cab of the vehicle you want to inspect those bolts to see if paint has ever been knocked off of them if paint's been knocked off of them it's a telltale sign that someone's had the door off why would someone have the door off body work right that makes kind of sense now there's another thing that I want you to listen to listen to this you hear that popping sound on the other side it doesn't make that sound so that driver's side does make a little bit more noise than the passenger side. Does that mean it's been in an accident? Absolutely not, but it means I'm going to hone in on that particular location to see if there's been any previous body work. Now that you understand how to check for body damage, how do you check to make sure you're not buying a lemon? The very first thing that I do, it's gonna sound crazy, is look for the oil change sticker. So almost every single vehicle on the inside of the windshield is going to have where uh, Express Oil or Jiffy Lube or whatever company did the oil change, look at the last time that it was done. And sometimes they don't say when it was done, but they tell you when it needs to be done next. And I cannot tell you how many times when I was appraising vehicles, uh, the a particular vehicle would show, hey, you need to get your oil changed at 50,000 miles, and uh, the truck's got 60,000 miles on the odometer. Now, that doesn't tell me that the vehicle has been uh, a lemon, but it could be a sign that the maintenance on the vehicle has been neglected by the previous owner. Now, the good news is this particular truck uh, says that the oil change needs to be done at 112,390 miles. And when I start the truck up, we've got 109,655 miles. So the good news is, is there's a good chance that this particular vehicle was properly maintained. But let's take a look under the hood to verify that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the hood, take a look underneath it, and and see what it, kind of condition is under here. 
Now, I actually prefer seeing my truck like this. Yes, you got a little bit of dust, but what tells me is that he didn't go mud riding in it and then detailed it just in time to sell it to me. So I actually kind of like seeing it in the raw form. You'll see this truck's not been detailed yet. It has not been through the whole reconditioning process that I'm going to put it through. And I'm gonna take you all through those steps through this build series. So make sure you are subscribed to channel so you don't miss that. And at the end of this, not only are we reconditioning it, but we are building it to the freaking max. Uh, we've hooked up with the Warren family of products, Fabtech suspensions, Factor 55, worn winches and fab fours to come up with something that's going to be absolutely epic. So the first thing that we're looking at is a relatively clean engine bay, especially for 109,000 miles on the odometer. And you'll notice that we are going to take a look at the oil. Oil has not been changed. You can see it's black, but it's not sludgy and there is actually oil on it. That is obviously a good thing. Uh, and also in addition to doing a an inspection like this just on your own, it's probably wise to pay for an extra person, a professional set of eyes to actually look at it and make sure there's nothing going on. And I'm going to tell you why underneath the vehicle. As I get my large six foot three self down underneath here, I wanna show you a couple of the things that you want to look at when you are uh, thinking about buying your next truck, whether it's a car, a pickup truck like this, doesn't matter what it is, but you wanna get underneath it if at all possible. So if taking it to a mechanic is not an option, um, yeah, you might be in a white shirt and you might be uh, absolutely getting stains all over by laying down on the asphalt, but it's extremely important, can save you thousands. So take a look at this right here, we've got the transfer case is actually seeping out right here where the drive shaft meets that transfer case. That's what you wanna look for is any kind of thing like this so that way you know what you're getting involved into. Now the good news is, is that I pretty much know what this is gonna cost, maybe five, 600 bucks will take care of this particular seepage, uh, but it is extremely important that you take care of that so that way you don't lose all the fluid and then absolutely grenade your transfer case. Underneath the front end around the motor area, there is a small seepage coming from right here. The good news is, is that when I noticed this, I got one of our technicians here to lay his eyeballs on it to see if this is going to be something that's $500 to fix the seepage, or is it gonna be $5,000? Because these diesels especially can get pretty expensive when it comes to the maintenance on these or fixing leaks and things like that. The good news is for the miles this one has on it, my guys are saying this is one of the cleanest trucks they've seen in a very, very long time. But there are a couple of other things that we do want to upgrade. Uh, and things that we are definitely going to upgrade. The first thing is going to be all of the suspension and the steering primarily. Uh, so the tie rods are going to be replaced because we're going to be putting some massive wheels and tires on this thing. And I wanna make sure that as far as driving it is concerned, this thing drives like it is absolutely brand new. So we're gonna do a lot of work in this particular area. The other thing is the brakes are definitely within a window that I don't need to replace them, but with the tires that I'm going to be putting on there, I need to go ahead and swap those out anyways. As well as the steering stabilizer, that is going to be something that is included with the upgrade package that we're going to be teaming up with Fabtech Motorsports on. I'm super excited about that. The last thing I wanna talk about mechanically speaking and making sure you're not buying a lemon is do your research. Search on Google, what are the some of the problems of a specific vehicle? If you're looking for, let's say a 2017 F-150 Raptor, type in 2017 F-150 Raptor, common problems. Something that might pop up would be like cam phasers. So now you know what the cam phasers are a typical or a normal problem on that model and you can show up and see if it's happening before you buy the vehicle. So if it's cam phasers, that typically only shows up when the vehicle is really, really cold. It's a cold start, the vehicle's not up to operating temperature. Well, in that situation, you would know that you need to show up at that dealership early in the morning, unannounced, to where you know that the salesperson hasn't had a chance to crank it up before you got there. That way you can hopefully identify that rattling or that ticking or whatever that situation is. I'm not picking on a Raptor and I'm not picking on cam phasers, Every vehicle has a known issue. Find out what that issue is, research that issue, and then do your due diligence to make sure it's not happening on that particular vehicle you've got selected. The last thing I wanna talk about is making sure that you're not getting a vehicle that's been abused on the inside. Obviously, you've got the normal wear and tear on the seats. That's not what I'm talking about. Your eyes can tell you that. 
But the other thing is, is if you have a chance to see the vehicle when it's dirty, like this one is, hasn't been through detail yet, that's actually a benefit because you'll be able to smell things like a uh, previously smoked in vehicle, which this one has not been. But what do you do if that vehicle's already been detailed? A lot of dealerships have the ability to remove that smoke smell from a vehicle and sometimes that removal is permanent. Sometimes that smell might come back after a month or two. What's a great way to do that? And I would argue that look at the cabin air filter. A lot of vehicles have a filter that keeps the outside air, it filters it before it brings it inside. And sometimes when it recirculates, you can actually smell that cabin air filter and you'll be able to smell if it got a smoke smell to it, even if the rest of the truck smells normal. So that way you can ensure to yourself that you're not gonna be smelling smoke a month or two months down the road. You've made it this far into the video, so I'm going to give you a pro tip as a bonus and that is going to be back into the mechanical side of things. The good news is this is a 2019 F-250 and it's connected to the internet via a hotspot, the Ford Pass Connect. And so every time that there's been a check engine light or any kind of an issue, a diagnostic trouble code, a DTC, it is sending that information directly to Ford. And so if you've got a friend at a Ford dealership, they can take that VIN number, plug it into the system and see all of the issues that has happened on this particular vehicle. But what happens if your vehicle's not connected to the cloud like this one is? Well, it's very simple. You would basically want to go to a AutoZone or to some other place that has a multi-tool that can plug into the OBD port. And from there, they can see some of or all of the DTCs that are currently showing up that may not actually trigger a check engine light. It's a little pro tip for you. And in some situations, some of those codes are saved for a period of time. So it's really important that you do it that way because if you don't get one of those professional inspections, you may not actually get that opportunity to see a hidden issue behind the scenes. And there you have it, the insider's look at what to look for when you are buying your next pre-owned vehicle. And guys, I do wanna say a huge thank you to the Warren family of products because you haven't seen it yet and I'm not gonna reveal it just yet, but this truck is going to be epic by the time we are done with it and as i mentioned to you we are going to give it away at the end of this whole build series again if this video up here gets 5,000 likes if you haven't clicked on the link to like the video make sure you do because if we don't get 5,000 likes no one gets a chance to win this and we want someone to win the ultimate tow rig so make sure you subscribe to the channel with the bell notification turned on so you don't miss the launch of that giveaway peace